are we still slaves? And if we are, who is the slave master? Slavery is a very soft topic in our community now. And when I ran Maya, uh, I had a lot of teachers. When I ran Maya, we brought Dr. John Henry Clark to Dallas, Texas. We brought Dr. Amos Wilson to Dallas, Texas. We brought Dr. Steve Coakley to Dallas, Texas. We brought Dr. Tony Morton to Dallas, Texas. We brought Brother Khaled Al Mansour to Dallas, Texas. We brought Chromie Ture, H. Ralph Brown, and at the same time, we brought our brother that's in Denver, locked down 23 hours a day, and we pray that God help us release them right away. Brother H. Ralph Brown, and brother, I mean, with his name now being Brother Jamil Amin, to Dallas, Texas. We brought Dr. Ben Carson here to uh, Dallas, Texas. We brought many great, great minds to this city and sisters. We helped with Tashila Shabazz and many, many others. But these was great teachers of our African and Pan-African history. And they made me, as a young man, believe enough to get up and do something about it and stop just reading about it. See, our problem is that we good readers and thank God for that. I'm talking about us. I ain't talking about all of us. I'm talking about the ones who come out to these kind of meetings. We know about the destruction of the African civilization. We know about Carter G. Wilson, the miseducation of the Negro. If we start naming books, they wouldn't name them all day. But we have to stop reading books and start rewriting books. Because if Booker T. Washington can write a book as a slave, we're talking about slavery for a minute, as a young slave who said he never sat at a table to eat until he was 16 years old, he ate off the floor, who we know was a janitor at Hampton University, and then became a teacher at Hampton University, then started Tuskegee Institute in Tuskegee, Alabama with $300, in it, and your daughter and your sons can go to Tuskegee to this day, brought us the great Carter G, uh, uh, brother George Washington Carter, but was writing books in the 1800s. When you talk about books, and you want to read something from Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass wrote his book, and if you have read this book, went to England, and they published this book while he was in England, and he said he never was treated so good by white folk like he was in England. And the white folks told him, with him being a slave in America, and his book is being, has been published, and is moving around the country, if you go back, they will arrest you. He came back within months. He said, I didn't write the book to run for my people, I wrote the book to free my people. So if a man can write a book as a slave, and as you know, on the 4th of July, the independence of these crackers, sit there and do the speech, who am I on your Independence Day as a slave could be arrested right after the speech? We have to do some book writing. See, the problem is we want to read books and celebrate books, but we got to write some books. But you know the problem with writing books? The problem with writing books, books are a very structured thing. They have an introduction. They have the forward. Then what they have? Chapters. If you write a book, you got to have some chapters in your life. You got to do some work. You just can't write a book. You have to do some work to be able to write a book. So we got to stop being so relaxed with reading books and sharing them with our families and our community. And we have to start writing books. And that means we're going to have to start working harder so we can have something to write books about because we are in an evolving and changing global international society and everybody in the world is waiting on Africans in America. So, slavery. Brother Taiwan. Yes, sir. 
you know, nothing works like visual. That's why a lot of us go to different schools. And I remember when my daughter was young, we took her to a Montessori school because Montessori school believed in visual and they believe in touching and feeling. And that's Africa, that's us. So I want to stop and I want to show some slides so when we talk about this, we can feel, you can feel your brother as we work through this because one of the most dangerous thing in the world is a people that don't think they got the power to change things. See, if we didn't have the power to change things, I wouldn't be here. But I know we do. I know we do. We're going to talk about it. Brother Taiwan, could you uh, just start clicking through? And for this room, a lot of these pictures you have seen, it's just a reminder to wake your conscious, your, your, uh, your visual and the right and left side, the maya, the, left, the right and left side of your brain up. So when we talk, we can we can really feel what we're about to talk about because this is a family meeting. Go ahead, Brother Taiwan. And we're worried about our feet. These are two brothers. Look how the brothers, you know, we, we're so used to being lynched and seeing the pictures of the lynchings hanging from the trees. But as you can see, they tied these brothers to the trees and evidently stabbed them or did something different. Go ahead, brother. When they had the children running around when they were selling slaves, if you, they had a sign posted. And that sign is still posted right outside in Dallas, Texas somewhere. Go ahead, brother. Now they got this brother tied to a pole. You can see the brothers in the background just looking out there watching. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. They done put a net on this one. Go back one. Can you go back? I'm going to tell y'all something about this. This picture here, I think it's the one, is a brother Washington in Waco, Texas. Jesse. I was born in Waco, Texas. Doris Miller is my uncle. And Jesse Washington was our great great uncle. And uh, so we really feel the pain. Go ahead, Brother Tommy. As you know, my former name was Steve Washington. Oh, go back one, brother. As you notice, this brother's head has been cut off. Dealing with some beast. Go ahead, brother Tom. Like and they were listed as sisters too, as we know. Mm -hmm. And we had to watch Rodney King and Emmett Till long before. But in the middle of all that is hope. Hope right there. Because when we get to talking about our, when I open up and talk about uh, June 19th. This is the general who came to Houston, Texas with 2,000 Union soldiers and let the African slaves know they were free. In uh, 18, June 19, 1865. That was the general right there with the Union Army who was given that mission, I think, by Jackson. Go ahead, brother. family. And this is the brother who fighting back. And I don't know if he was shot or not, but I wish I was I wish I could work with him. A picture of our family. God. 
right there, Brother Taiwan. This is a group out of Austin, Texas, uh, in the early, early 1900s, I think it was said 1901, they put one of the first uh, huge June 19th, that was a June 19th committee for the state of Texas. It was sharp, wasn't it? <laughs> Go ahead, Brother Tommy. Same group, a different group, but the same. Uh, they really cared about this June 19th. We're going to talk about it in a minute. This is uh, slavery in itself, and we all know in this room. Who is this? All right. My God. Hold right there, bro. It's impossible to even think that our children will be able to do math or read. But you'll be surprised how I many can't. Go ahead, bro. This is the brother who said that NFL football is like slavery, and they got mad at him. Brother uh, Peterson is his name, I think. Yeah, yeah they was angry at this brother because he told the truth. He know they own the block for sale. They can be shipped to any plantation at any time. Go ahead, brother. This is the brother who I really disappointed him. And I believe he could have did so much in the position and the power he had in the Jordan. But some of these brothers want to live off of walking across a bridge in 1950-something instead of doing something in 2013. We're going to talk about him when we talk about are we still a slave and who is a slave now. Go ahead, Tom. That's what they feel about their... Uh, President and the President of the United States of America and uh, the Commanding General. Now, if they would have, if we would have did this, if the Black Panther Party would have did this, all our houses would have been surrounded. That's right. White people do what the hell they want. Go ahead, Brother Tom. How many of y'all have seen the uh, Juneteenth flag? That's the official Juneteenth flag that the. Uh, Committees we were showing earlier. Commission. Yes, sir. That's it. All right. You can turn the lights on. Just some visual reminders so when we get into this, we'll be able to work. Now, if we're going to deal with the topic of slavery, we have to go back to Africa, am I right? Now, it was documented that Africa is equal in size and mass if you had the United States, India, Europe, China, and Argentina and put them all together, that would be the size of Africa. As y'all know, when uh, Obama was elected, he went, one of the first things he did, he went to the GA Summit. The GA Summit is the top eight industrial countries in the world, and they basically set out the politics 20 years and 50 years out. And we know that it's Britain, France, Germany, Portuguese, Belgium. We know the different European countries that's involved in that. But what happened is, thank you, bro. What happened is when Obama went to the GA summit, he left the GA summit and he made an unannounced visit to Ghana. Y'all remember that? And he landed in Ghana and Rush Limbaugh and all the boys went crazy because they were like, how can the president just go to Africa and it's not on his agenda? And he stayed for one day in Ghana and he went in the door and out of the door of no return 
that we well know about in this room. So to us, he was sending a message that he just left the GA summit with eight European countries and their staffs talking about the future of the world and ain't a damn thing they had in their folders had anything to do with any industrial anything because their countries ain't got nothing in them. The folders was full of what? Africa. If they was dealing with rubber, they was dealing with what? Liberia. If they was dealing with coffee in their little Starbucks, what were they dealing with? If they was dealing with iron, ore, gold, silver, they was dealing with their little cell phones and the little silver that come out of Nibia that makes the cell phones all over the world working with, what were they dealing with? If they were dealing with all them old Dutch in Nigeria was dealing with Shell R, they were dealing with what? Nigeria. He said, it. He, this is the biggest game ever been played on the world. That these people have nothing. And every white economy in the world is based on Africa. And we sitting here and have no, us again, please. every economic, if you get the IRS, if you get these CPAs to go and study any, open any books on any of these countries, their wealth comes from Africa. So we are here under British rule, 1776 Tea Party and all that, then they Lie about 1912 in Jamestown, Virginia. 20 Africans were brought over here. We know it was way before. But we're dealing with a concept of us Africans in channel slavery through the triangle for over 400 and some years. John Henry Clark said if they emptied the Atlantic, we could walk on the slave bones to America. But that bothers me. But as I got deeper in studying, something started to bother me worse. When I read stuff like in, 19, in 1884, when did Lincoln sign the proclamation? We're going to go over those dates. But in 1884, that was 1863, right? Now think about that. We're Africans in this country, and Lincoln, the cracker, just do what he do. And we all know what he did, and he didn't do it because he loved us, and that he had curly hair. He did it because these old white crackers out here with these plantations, looking like Boss Hall, spitting tobacco, didn't know how to talk proper English, had more money than them intellectuals from Harvard and Yale up north, and these crackers was killing them with this cotton and this tobacco and these Negro slaves. But then we say in 1865, 1863, we'll go over all them dates because it's very important for the youth to know the right dates. My teacher and mentor, Dr. Khaled Muhammad, was well studied. He uh, really believed in research and we try to carry on that legacy. But in 1884, there was a conference called the Berlin, the Berlin Conference. It was held in Europe by colonies uh, who their power was, they decided how Africa would be split up. It would be split up to France, Germany, Portuguese, the Belgian, and Britain. Now just think about, think with me for a minute. We get taken, we over here for three, four hundred years, we get freed in 1865, and they are holding a conference in 1884 on enslaving Africa. Think about it. Splitting up Africa. And they did it. And so, then you start looking at the dates Seiko Ture in Africa, May 25th, 1963, uh, 31 independent African countries met and they, they put together an organization called the Organization for African Unity. 
the OAU. Are y'all with me? Talk black to me. What year? 1963. This is 1963. I'm born. I'm living. I'm, I'm born in 62. Maker Herbert gets shot in Mississippi in what? 1963. We over here, I mean, the reason I brought up Brother Maker Herbert because we already in the civil rights movement. We done got beyond slavery. And you got brothers in Africa having to organize an organization in the 60s. Then in 72, uh, the organization uh, had over 40,000 people uh, in different parts of America come together and they put together African Liberation Day. That's 1972. For the little sisters in here, we'll give you one. In 72, we had our first black or African to ever run for president of the United States. And it wasn't Jesse, it wasn't Al, it wasn't Obama, it was Shirley Chisholm in New York, our congresswoman who said she couldn't be bought and couldn't be paid. And at 72, we got a sister running for president of the United States and we got Africans starting an African Liberation Day. And then we all know in 1990, our brother Nelson Mandela was released after 27 years of captivity by the British. This is really, really deep stuff. You got a country and a nation of people who are the greatest people ever to live on earth. And I'm talking about warriors, I'm talking about Zulus. I'm talking about Maroons. I'm talking about President Obama's father, if he ever remember, which is a, what group? No, when we talk Kenya, we talking Mau Mau's. Mau Mau wasn't no punk. We're talking warriors. What make the African so vulnerable? What nature make us so vulnerable? that we have to deal with are we slaves, how we got to be slaves, but the bigger picture is when we look back with Sankofa and go back, that the most powerful 54 nations of the world was enslaved by a couple of crackers. I tell young people all the time all over the world that you're not a minority. All you have to do is get on one of these little air train flights and go two hours in any direction, you become the minority as soon as you land in Brazil, as soon as you land in Colombia, as soon as you land in Haiti, as soon as you land in Jamaica, as soon as you land in the Bahamas, before you get to Ghana, before you get to Zimbabwe, before you get to Liberia. These crackers ain't but two places you can go to see them. <laughs> Come on now. And then what makes this cracker be a cracker? And for you all, bringing back my, my brother and mentor, Dr. Khaled Muhammad, the cracker name came from the crack of the whip. And so the crackers got to take that cracker standing up. <laughs> Don't get mad at me. You shouldn't have never put the marks on our back. We will always call you crackers and remind our people why we call you crackers. This is real family talk. Why are we in a situation where we watch Shaka Zulu? What does these little British do? How can we even make a statement and repeat a statement that the sun rises and sets on the British Empire? Why did Nkrumah have to free an African country that's full of gold in 1954 from the British? Why did Patrice Lumumba have to free the Congos from the Belgian? Why did Joe Kiante have to free Kenya for some crackers? Why? Why were these Jews even trying to land in Uganda? Why did any I mean even have to deal with them? Why? Because by nature, God made us a loving people. God made us a caring people. God made us a people that cared about humanity because really, these are our babies.
It's hard to kill your own baby. But sometimes that baby need a whooping. So, these are serious times and a serious hour when we talk slavery. Now, if we saying, wow, it gets deep in the mind to think of how powerful we are. How many of y'all seen uh, both episodes of uh, Dr. James Small and uh, KRS One in the uh, video. What's it called? Taiwan Color. Uh, Hidden, Hidden, Hidden Colors. Hidden Colors. Man, ain't that thing deep? Yes, sir. You know what bothered me about it when KRS One talk about the Klan uniform? He said, "You can't go to Goodwill and buy a Klan uniform. You can't go to the Salvation Army and buy a Klan uniform. And if y'all went to Plano." Out there with them crackers, I think it's still crackers, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Or North Dallas, and go to the cleaners, you won't see them bringing in no clan uniforms to get clean. Where do they clean them at? <laughs> Where are the clan suits? Why ain't none on display nowhere? Because they still in their damn closets and they use them every day, man. The clan uniform would never go away. Now, let's talk some good talk. Slavery. We're in a unique situation because for all of these years, these crackers have really pulled the okie doke on us. They showed us this Tarzan. They showed us these cannibals stirring up somebody, eating them out of a pot. They made us almost hate Africa through their sensationalism. That's why slavery lasted so long because the Africans they bought here in slavery if you take my baby and you teach my baby who my baby is and you take me from my baby, my baby's at a disadvantage. But then if you take my baby baby and you teach that baby and you teach that baby, generations of ignorance taught to them by this European in the way they wanted to teach. And then all of a sudden we're here. But some in our psyche keep coming up that they lying. This is not real Christianity. Then we find out much, much later about Michelangelo and all that. But just stick with me for a minute in slavery, because now I'm really understanding the damage they did to us. And how, you know why? Because we got a lot of modern day slaves that's damaged right now. And y'all can name some of them. I ain't been around Dallas in a while, but when I was here, I used to have to protest every day, and half the time had to protest Negro. <laughs> so, the damage that was done to us. So I'm at Clark University, Atlanta Clark University speaking. And the Chinese girl is speaking. And she says, you know, Chinese get, uh, when they come to America, they excel and they do so well in your schools and this, that, and that. And I had to tell her, wait a minute, that's good. I mean, that's right. You're telling the truth. We can't fight truth. If you're fighting against truth, you're going to lose. Because truth is truth. But I had to tell her the other truth. I said, I don't care if you go to Harvard, Yale, Duke, if you go to Princeton, if you go to any of the great think tanks, cracker think tanks, that they think is great. They all record the same thing, that the best grades made in the institutions in America are Africans from Africa. Nobody can touch them. Did y'all know that? That's on record. Why do the Africans from Africa come over and do so well? But we the slaves here in the institutions, a lot of them were started by people like George, uh, we talked about Booker T. Washington earlier, for us. I was at Clark two weeks ago. Clark has most of the time 6,200 students in the lab. It's down to 3,300. Morehouse is the same. I was talking to a brother from Gremlin. They think about making Gremlin a junior college. Why ain't we going to black institutions anymore? Now they, you know what they're doing? They're bringing in the whites to the institution. Mm -hmm. Through scholarships, because they got to get some people in the campuses. Where have we disconnected from the struggle, from revolution, from education, from our higher learning institutions? 
dying right before our eyes. Slavery of the mind. So I, I, I have to deal with this. So this is what happened. This is one man's opinion. These crackers. Y'all know about the ADL, JDL? JDL. A ADL, JDL. These are Jewish, Jewish Defense League. These are Jewish organizations that monitor black folk and run the world from surveillance and all that stuff they talking about. The United States doing right now, them Jews been doing it. They just celebrate their 100 year. Why did the Jews need ADL or JDL 100 years ago if all of this going to come right back to slavery? Because you know about the Jewish Holocaust, but we don't know about the African Holocaust. We're talking about the damage that's done to us and continuously done to us, and I'm going to tell you why and how it's done to us. And you got to understand the plane for the kids can change it because they know that it's going to change. We ain't going to talk. But the kids might have a chance to change if they take it serious. Some of the stuff they're finna hear right now. The JDL and ADL, the Jews own New York Times. They own Dallas Morning News. They own the San Francisco Chronicle. They own the Atlanta Journal Constitution. They own Time Magazine. They own most of your media outlets. They started the AP, Associated Associate Press. I just mess up this English all the time. Forgive me. It wasn't meant for them. And if this brother do something, they can put him on the front page of every paper in America and ruin his life in a matter of a push of a button called sin. This is the power these people got, and this is what they use every day. Where did we let them, and where did we go wrong? We gave them our babies. In the early 80s, going into, I mean, the late 80s going to the 90s, they start portraying our babies as hoodlums and thugs, pants down, drive-by shoes, black-on-black -black crime. And they rolled this through their media machine on the front page of the Dallas Morning News every day until it soaked in, until they start making you go around the corner and go around the block in your own neighborhood because you didn't want to go by the two brothers who was on the corner because you saw a shooting last night. When they your nephews, they your son, they your <laughs> son's friend, when you should have been stopping your car, putting the flashes on and going up there dealing with them. But they made you so fearful them, and they pants are down. And let me tell you something, there's some people that went across Morehouse stage and shook Obama hand with their pants down. Pants down ain't got nothing to do with your mind. I don't like it, but it don't describe your mind. It's just something that we into right now. But they took our babies from us, man. We, we were desensitized. <clears throat> so when we see them handcuffing a brother, we wouldn't do like Harry New. We wouldn't do like Brother King and some of the Panthers and go up and check the pig and see what he's doing. What would we do? We will go the other way, man. Another nigga done did something. <laughs> Think about what you used to say. We get home, and before we even get the car in the garage, we hit the remote. It damn near hit the trunk. We go look at us and hand it in cone and Russ Limbaugh. And don't come back out until 730, peep in our own neighborhood. Shoot across town. Getting away from what? Who? A great writer wrote. No race of people. No race of people. Display the worst of their race before the world. We don't either. But they did because they own the press. And so once they took our babies, they started coming from the grown-ups. Let me tell you how they did it in Atlanta. They can't even show somebody selling some weed, somebody buying a prostitute, some gangbanger. It's just numb now. It showed it too much. So last week, they indicted Tyrone Brooks one of the brothers who soldiered with Dr. King for 25 years. Last week, two weeks ago, they indicted, the sister was over Atlanta school board and gave her a $7 million bond. And they indicted 136 school teachers and principals in Atlanta. In Atlanta, there's a county called DeKalb County where I stay is the second richest county as far as blacks in America. They indicted that school board president and the government 
the governor of Georgia appointed school board member. In Atlanta, we vote for our school board member. But it gives the crackers and the Republicans a way to come in and point who they want over our kids. So if they get your babies during the day, they'll come for you at night. Now the DA, Paul Howard, now they try and indict him. I ain't telling y'all nothing. Y'all went through it with John Wally Price and, and uh, uh, Brother Al Lipkin and how they come after us. Hell, look what they're doing to Obama. So they, then look what they did. Y'all heard of Eddie Long, because y'all got a, uh, y'all got a uh, T.J. So we had Eddie Long. They broke that man down to nothing, man. So what they doing now? Going after your educators. Going after your president. Going after your preachers. They breaking the foundation of the African in America. Why? Why on the 5 o'clock news you never see a Chinese getting arrested? They got the Chinese mafia. Why you never see nobody from India being arrested? They ain't all successful. Why on your 5 o'clock news you don't see a person from Africa being arrested? Why you don't never see other cultures? You don't see no Japanese head all down, they put them in a car. You only see your people. And you know why they do it? Because you don't say a damn thing about it, man. I don't care how powerful you think they are. As long as you buying that Colgate, you support it. Long as you drinking that Coke, you support it. Long as you buying that Mazda, you support it. Because advertising is what pay for news. So you're supposed to study the news. You're supposed to go down to Channel 2 and say, look here. Colgate, we can't buy no more. If you keep running the 5 o'clock news, I seen it was Colgate, Shell, or Exxon. We ain't using Exxon no more. We ain't using Shell no more. That's right. If we have to start making oil in the, I mean, gas in the backyard, you got to send the advertisers a message and the advertisers will say, stop this. That's right. Why? Why? Everybody want to act like Dr. King was a punk. Let me tell you something. Are you listening? Dr. King's last speech was given word, the sister. I ain't putting you on the spot. I want to help you. No? No, I'm going to help you. No? Now, you say with me, and you say between all these black people, and you'll never forget this again because Brother Hashim put you on the spot. It's going to help you later, and you put somebody on the spot. I've been put on the spot. It was Memphis, Tennessee. And he got killed at the Lorraine Hotel, Black Hotel, in 1968. He has reminded. And he did a speech the day before he was killed. Can somebody tell me what the name of the speech? Mountain. I've been to the mountaintop. And the same media <coughs> we're talking about took 12 minutes of that speech and played it so many times. Everybody here can say, I've been to the mountaintop. I ain't fearing no man. I've looked over and seen the coming of the Lord. White people don't care when you're ready to die. They say, good. That nigga finna get out of here. But boy, if you go to the King Center, or if you go online, and you get the whole 42 minutes of that tape, it'll change your life. You would think Malcolm X and Garvey were speaking at the same time. Can I share the other 32 minutes with you? King said the other 32 minutes, they say we poor. They say we weak. We are if we stay separated. He said, but in 1968, we spent $31 billion, black people in America. He said, and that made us the fifth richest nation in the world. We're richer than China. I mean, not China. He said, we're richer than Canada. I don't, I'm telling you what's, what he's saying. He goes on to talk about the nation that we as black people in America in 1967 was richer than. He said, we spent $31 billion, Brother King. In 1967, That's right. we spent $131 billion last year. He said, so what I want y'all to know is, we ain't buying no more coke. Y'all didn't hear that in his last speech, did you? We ain't buying no more one the bread. He said, we ain't dealing with no more white insurance companies. We're dealing with black insurance companies. Right. Y'all didn't hear that part of the speech, did you? He said, we ain't dealing with no more white banks. We're going to put our money in black banks. Go get the tape. He said, Jesse, 
A man can't ride your back unless it's bent. The black man got to straighten up his back. He said, they talking about when we get to heaven, we're going to wear white all over heaven. I like that. I like that. He said, but we need some dresses and some suits and some shoes right now. He said, talking about a new Jerusalem, all the preachers want to talk about it. We need a new New York. That's right. We need a new Atlanta. Right. We need a new Memphis. Y'all didn't hear him say that, did you? Yes, sir. Then Dr. King went on to say in that speech, he said, the black man got to stop laughing when something ain't funny and scratching when he don't itch. You didn't hear that, did you? You got to go get that speech, man. These people were mad at this man when they killed him. Dr. King was coming around. You know, he had went back to, he was doing the poor people campaign. He said we was going back because what? They had gave us an insufficient check. Now let's talk about, all of this is dealing with slavery and are we still slaves? And why, and we gotta give our young people some tools that they can use to get out of this slavery. Because slavery is a state of mind. So Dr. King said, a man can't ride your back unless it's bent. He told us to stop buying these products. The products is what's killing us. We go into a Chinese restaurant and we say this over and over again and we pass it and we die and we pass it to our kids and we keep saying it but we don't do nothing about it. We don't see, not even the broom sweeper in there is black. And we get us a double portion of food and then get a $3 coat. And the food ain't no good for you no way. We are our worst enemy. We go into a Indian cleaners, bypass the brothers cleaners. And these people don't even look up at you when they talking to you. And we buy their goods. Why? Why do we rush to give our money to everybody? Something wrong, man. With us, not them. Every race of people come over here and live among themselves. You follow, all right, let's just do this. For the, for the camera and for the young people. Anybody here got a Chinese neighbor, raise your hand. Anybody in here got a Japanese neighbor, raise your hand. Anybody in here got a neighbor from India, raise your hand. These people ain't living next to you, but they'll come and get the spot on the corner that you should got and sell you goods. We have been a rich people. In the 30s, we own our own bus lines. We own our own insurance companies. We own our own little stores and mom and pop stores. I'm so glad my daughter might not got to do it, but I used to walk down barefooted on rocks to the candy lady. And I spent me 35 cents and had a bag of candy and a pickle went on and marched all night. Where's the candy lady at? She's 7-Eleven now. Talk black to me. How can the people keep us slaves like this? How can the people slave our country like this? Africa is waiting on us more than we're waiting on them. But damn fools. Talking about I ain't going to Africa, because white people, they told us about Africa. And you go out there to the DFW airport and try to get on a plane to Africa, you'll be the only Negro on the plane. <laughs> They'll be on laughing and giggling and talking about, can I have another Cavazier? Because I'm going to get me some more diamonds. What is wrong with us, man? We can't let our kids keep going into this. We're a global, international, fast-moving society. We can Google all this stuff. Carter G. Woodson said, if they board up the back door, we'll turn the board down to get back in there. We got to leave that board on that door. We can't let our kids go through this psychological damage like Amos Wilson talked about. No more. It is a way out. But we got to be honest with ourselves. Last week, the other group called the National Conference of Black Mayors. And it met in Atlanta, Georgia. And the executive director of that organization is a sister named Vanessa Williams. And we have 600 
and 69 black mayors in America. Did y'all know that? We got power, man. Because, let's be honest, nobody really know who they senator is or their state legislator. <coughs> Every once in a while you know who the congressman is. But we know who that mayor is. Because we can go down and sit with that city council and listen to what they're doing and we can sign our name even and talk to them. Am I right? Well, mayor's got more power than anybody because they don't have to go through a lot of politics to, to say yes. So you got, <clears throat> why are these other countries we talked about and these other people from other nations coming over here doing so much better than us? Because we are slipping on our job. We're not writing books. We're not, we don't have our chapters together yet, as I said earlier. Because, listen to me closely, they did a deal called what? Affirmative action. Man, listen how we, we are, not them, we. We are a people that they said in 1619, 20 slaves came off a ship <coughs> and was sold like cow. We are a people in this constitution that was written as how many filth of a man? Three fifths of a man. It's written. We can prove them. We can prove this. Right? right. This ain't Brother Hashim talking. This is facts in American history. We are the people who were enslaved in these cotton fields, tobacco fields, building these cities, got Negroes sitting there taking pictures, building the White House. Am I right? right. We done this. Yep. And they know they were wrong. Lynching us, burning us. So when Lincoln signs the proclamation and Juneteenth come around, now let's look at Juneteenth because I'm going to go back to this point, but we want to get some facts for the babies. September 22nd, 1862, President Lincoln proclamation was telling the rebellion and those slaves joined the Union Army. And this is where you get into where certain slaves were free before other slaves because in January 1st, 1863, we celebrated their pro the uh, <coughs> and uh, we we celebrated the proclamation which declared the slaves to be free in 11 rebel ran states. The rest of the states and all the Africans <coughs> in the world was free. January 31st, 1865, when Congress passed the 13th Amendment abolishing slavery throughout the United States. And of course, we just talked about June 19, 1965, the cracker we showed while the cocaine down here with 20,000, I mean 2,000 Union soldiers and free Texas. So what I'm trying to put together here is all of this is documented that all of this had to be done because we were mistreated and we were slaves for some 300 years, but when we start talking about reparations, then they think, they start talking to us like we're talking foreign talk, nobody understands, and now we're talking Chinese and Portuguese and something all together, and it's a new language. But when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor and declared war on America, and we don't even know if that really happened the way they happened, but let's just go with their facts. Okay. When the Japanese in, in 48 bombed Pearl Harbor, Right? And that country declared war on America, right? Then they went and put the Japanese in concentration camps, and the Japanese got reparations. Am I right? Yes, sir. Our red man and red sister has certain reparations. And the white man, <laughs> white man, funny dude. He tried to be an Indian when it's time to get money. Yeah. He give you something to come take it back. Are we getting back to us? What we're coming back to is teaching our kids about how they use and pimp us. And why we're the race of people that get pimped all the time because we are the only ones who have the birthright and the legacy, Africans in America, to claim this reparation that will shut this country down and can win. Nobody else can claim this. So they give us affirmative action. And before it even start good, 
they bring the white woman in there and make her a minority. Yeah. How in the hell the uh, owner of Cheryl's wife uh, driving next to her husband home in the Bentley can be a minority? I guess she take the motor bus. Y'all got what bus y'all got here? It ain't more. Dark. She take the dark bus downtown and get in line with the sisters for food stamp. How uh, can you do this to us on our call? It was put together because even when we came out of slavery, even in 1865, when the proclamation was signed, where in the hell could we go? What could we do? Most of us couldn't read and write. You cheated us out of our education. Man, I was in a board meeting last week in Atlanta. And they talking about the system. Put a $7 million, $7 million bond on the system talking about it was all over cheating. They did some in Atlanta where if you, your class, your school uh, got higher grades in the scoring, you got a bonus. Why in the hell are teachers getting bonuses to do what they supposed to do anyway? The trash man get paid more than the teachers. The 7-Eleven counter person get paid more than teachers. Pay the teachers what they're worth. But we tried to tell them, Dr. Collin tried to tell them, you're dealing with Berkeley and Harvard and Yale and Duke and these crackers coming up with these books and these textbooks and they teaching you testing and they making the test just as crazy as the damn test when in the 60s you had to go try to vote and you had to count bubbles in a soap bar and count how many bubble gums is in a machine. And then they pumped through white intellectuals with a bunch of Negroes around them taking photos, these testing in our school system that wasn't right for our children no way. And our grades start to fall. Then you come back with your second plan and you tell us if we can pick up the testing, you will give up bonuses. Knowing that 136 teachers got busted. But in Atlanta, that's probably 6,700 teachers. What about the 98 that didn't cheat? Mm -hmm. You wanted to parade before the world because you want India and Africa and Ghana and Brazil and China to think that we're ignorant folks and we can't teach and we can't handle our educational system. You study weakening the African, the slave of America before the world. Why? Why this attack on us? Because we the only ones can ask for reparations. And we done got so far away from them, we don't even say it no more. Right. And when my mentor, Dr. Kali Muhammad, and my man Malik Zulu Shabazz, right. brought him to Howard University, and on C-SPAN, Kali did the Black Holocaust on. with Brother Steve Coakley, Come on, right. Dr. Leonard Jeffrey, who I was with a couple weeks ago, and Tony Martin. Right. We ate him alive. Come on. Doc said he walked through the Jewish Museum in Washington, D.C. How the hell these Jews got a museum in Washington, D.C.? And the Africans who built the White House got nothing. And we sitting there giggling, eating M&Ms, drinking Coke, and trying to get some nice potato chips. What's wrong with us, man? Where's our mind? These people are handling their business. These Jews got a museum next to the White House. We built. And in 1940 something when Hitler did what he did to them, black soldiers went over to Germany and turned off the gas and walked them out of the gas chambers. Go look at your history books. White people didn't go in there and mess with that gas. They started the gas. <laughs> Prescott Bush was in bed with Hitler. Ford, who invented your car, wrote a book called How the Jews Created Hollywood. They ain't friends of these Jews. If they are, after the Germany Holocaust, why come the Jews didn't come to America? Why did they have to go to Israel? Why did the Palestinian brothers have to give them land if we were so in love with them? We knew what they would do. They would take ABC. They would take Dallas Morning News. They would take Atlanta Journal Constitution. They would take Time Magazine. Right. They would take Newsweek. Right. 
They would give Rush Limbaugh whatever he wanted. They would give Bill O'Reilly whatever he wanted to keep you baffoon. They would take Jay-Z from you. They would take 50 Cent from you. They would take Curtis Mayfield who wrote 2,000 songs and take his rights to his songs and partner it with their nieces, nephews, and build a legacy off. They would kill Michael Jackson before your eyes. Kill Whitney Houston before your eyes. The same people who own Universal, who now own Motown, and all the rest who now own BET, Viacom, same group. Steal your intellectual property, man. Then just because you can talk about the Mississippi burning just because a Cheney and a Goodman came down. Yeah, they'll sacrifice a couple of their own to run you. You sitting here doing protests with 250,000 and five Jews up there. We shall. <laughs> <laughs> they never came to march with you. They came to lead you. Ask W.E. Du Bois for the historians in the room. When the NAACP was started, it was all Jews and one nigga Teach on, teach on, teach on the Talk to me. And for the FBI who's in the room and on the camera. Right. The hell with you. Because you sit, you little punk. Yeah, he was a faggot. Jager Hoover. You sick them on Marcus Garvey. And we let a little gay white man destroy Marcus Garvey right before our eyes. That's right, that's right. We let him work between W.E.D. boys. That's right. And work them apart. Right before right. our eyes. Right. Then when they got rid of Garvey, <laughs> where where is the Black Cross? <laughs> where is our ships? <laughs> we ain't did nothing since. Look, gay man. Yes, sir. A little gay man who said Dr. Martin Luther King was the most dangerous man alive. That's right. How you gonna say Dr. King is the most dangerous man alive and stand up and be the uh head of the FBI and still have your job. This man talking about we shall overcome and little black boys and white girls playing in the red clay of Georgia. He wasn't talking about cutting off these crackers head. And then this man gonna sit there and run almost nine presidents because he was eavesdropping on their conversations and had dirt on them. Every last one of them wanted to fire him. But he would talk about all of them. If y'all done read the books and know about Cointel Pro, this little white yeah. cracker was crazy, man. Psychotic little old fat. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Tell me the sister who went to, t I mean the white woman who went to Tuskegee and flew on the plane with the brothers. He told Roosevelt, you know your wife gay? I tell the world. If you don't sign me up for, the yeah, that's the kind of stuff he would do. It's on record now. This man should have been indicted for treason. And he's a hero, name on every building in the world. He killed Dr. King. Killed him. And when you go to Georgia, the FBI federal building is named Dr. King. You're gonna kill him and put his name. He destroyed Malcolm X. That's right. They put him on a federal stamp and his family don't even get the money for the stamp. The crackers get the money for Malcolm X stamp. And we sitting here all conscious and wondering why we still slaves. That's right. We slaves because we ain't angry about what we need to be angry about. Right. We ain't taking care of business what we need to be taking care of business. Right. And these people are willing to die and kill to run this thing, man. Yep. This ain't play talk. We had a brother come out with FUBU, that's dangerous. For us, by us. Right. The Jews bought it for him. Told him how he was gonna spread it around the country. That nigga went two blocks that way with that little couple million they gave him, and they took it right and put it in the trash right. can. You can't find FUBU nowhere in America. Am I right? Not right. nowhere. John Johnson, right there in Midland, Texas, where I grew up. Somebody knocked on my mama's door. Had a little folder. Talking about we got this new network called BET. My mama said, what is that? You know, my mama one of my old saints. She had to get her glasses. <laughs> Let me see, baby, what you talking about. So if I give you $6, I'm 
we're going to be able to have something black come on our TV? Yes, ma'am. And my mama signed up, and yours did too. And we have John Johnson, Bill BET. And then he got Tavis Smiley and all them brothers and sisters. He started building that news channel. And he stopped showing so many rap videos. And that news got to going. Then he got that sister, what's her name, Beverly? Beverly Smith? Bev Smith. Bev Smith. And he got to doing them shows. We were finna have our own Bill O'Reilly. Right. We were finna have our own Hannity That's and Kong. Right. And them Jews saw it and they went in there. Can we talk to you, Billy? Who owns Essence Magazine? Who owns 50% of Ebony right now as we speak? Who owns Motown? Who owns Proline? My big brother Como Cottrell right here in Dallas. But who owns Proline now? We give them everything, man. That's right. Now they got the BET Awards. Just drop it like it's hot. And that's all we get. Come on, man. You think Wendy really got in the bathtub and drowned herself? Man, Wendy was one of the best ever. <coughs> they tried to send her on a tour. She was hoarse. She couldn't get through it. She went through the stuff with Bobby. She was beginning to be an embarrassment to the Jews. Do you know how many songs they have, I mean, how many CDs they sold since her death? You know, go check, I have. She one of the top female sellers of all time. Do you know how many Michael Jackson CDs been sold since his death? I got documented proof that they killed Michael Jackson. And then in England, they built an insurance policy on for a billion dollars. And then, because they wanted him to go on tour, these guys out of England put an insurance policy on him. Then they hired the doctor who killed him. And so if you're murdered, the insurance policy, what, doubles? Because Michael wouldn't give him that Paul, uh, that Beatles catalog. Talk to me. You go talk, talk to me about Sam Cooke was killed by some black product. You out of your mind. Come talking to me about our brother sitting on the dock of the bay plane just crashed. Stuff just don't happen to certain people. Why are all the temptations? Damn near die broke. These people steal from us right before our millions of dollars and they build legacies. That's right. And let me tell you something. The slave thing. If my son or my daughter gotta go get a job from a white man, I'm in trouble. When you guarantee that you can employ your kids, that's the best way to go. That's what they do, man. So now it's so cold-blooded how they do it now. They got little young white boys, little young Jews. They just pass stuff to their nephew. You, you, you run Motown. That's right. I'm not going out there with them niggas. That's right. You, you run BET. That's right. Let me tell you a con game that they did. And anything I say, check it. Like Steve Copeland say, fact check. BET was bought by uh, Viacom. The year they bought it, the next year they did the BET Award. You know why? Because we Negroes love awards. If you get a little plastic thing and put our name on it, we get so damn happy, we'll just walk the desert. It's such a game. So the BET Awards is in Atlanta, right? Why? Gucci Man in Atlanta, T.I. in Atlanta, Outkast in Atlanta, Andre 3000 in Atlanta, Ursha's in Atlanta. Right. Who else is in Atlanta? I mean, I can name so many people in Atlanta, I'd be up here all day. Waka Flocka in Atlanta. Right. Sierra's in Atlanta. Right. On and on. All the, Luda is in Atlanta. Jeezy is in Atlanta. Right. Webby is in Atlanta. in Atlanta. So when they come to Atlanta, the mayor give them the Fox Theater to do the BET Awards at the Civic Center. They say, hey, we'll bring it if you... Man, so, oh, yeah, we need that. So they get the damn Civic Center for free. Listen to me. Then all the artists are there, or at least 70% of them, so they don't even have to buy a nigga an airplane ticket or a hotel. T.I. ain't finna leave his $2 billion house to come sleep at the Marriott. He ain't finna let your little old uh, country
Continental limo come pick him up, he gonna drive his Phantom or his Bentley or his Maserati. So they only got to even get a nigga's transportation. <laughs> now you got the place free. You can get Will Smith and Jada Pickett to host it for you. They probably cost a million dollars a piece for to do something for us. But that BT award, we'll host it. They might have to fly them in. They might have to hotel them at the Four Seasons. But they're going to host them. Now you got all these black artists in Atlanta. Then they got the big stage behind them with the fire blowing and the lights <laughs> lighting up. Right. They go get their little Jewish cousins to build that. Mm. Then they charge it to your record label. Mm. They might charge $250,000 to build a little display behind T.I. Then T.I. And uh, my friend, good friend of mine, Jason Jeter, who's the other part of Grand Hustle, they have to pay for that. But they let their little Jewish cousins and nephews get that little money. Then if you ever went to BT Awards, you go behind the scene, and a nigga back there. Hmm. There's all white people running the lights, walking around with the little radios. Come this way, T.I. Luda, could you come with me? They, they get paid. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Brother Taiwan, what they say about the Super Bowl? Everybody watch Super Bowl to watch what? Have the time. So all of a sudden, BT Wars. Fly Delta. That's right. Eat more chicken. Use Colgate. Huh? Sprite. They all pay them Jews too. So now they're getting all the advertising money. And guess what? The Civic Center hold about 17000 Niggas got to pay for them seats. So we line up to get the tickets. I want to be on the front. If you get the front, you're paying about $1,000. So we fill up the arena. Then they run the BT wall how many times? Oh, so the advertisers oh, really pay for it. Yes, yes, yes. So when we leave, we leave in the Phantoms. We walk the red carpet. We leave in the Bentleys. But it's one little Jewish man with a briefcase leave. But hold on. He get in a Ford Taurus, probably a 1990. And boy, when he get to the bank, he have to call somebody to meet him at the car. What's wrong with us, man? Why do we know this and continue to let it happen? We're, we're the slave master. Because we have these conversations, and then we don't do nothing about it. Tomorrow we'll be eating Chinese food bright and early. Instead of going and getting on the internet and putting our kids around the dinner table, talking about, look, this is where the rubber comes. You can't find the rubber plant in Chicago. It's in Liberia. We need to get to Liberia, and they want us to get to them. Because we just had the National Conference of Black Mayors. 669 black mayors in Atlanta, guess what? 270 brothers and sisters came from Bermuda, Jamaica, Haiti, Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, Uganda. So now the National Conference of Black Mayors just became the International Conference of Black Mayors. Right now in Las Vegas, if you Google it, they have in the National Conference of Mayors. That's the white mayors. But a brother named uh, Clint Ford was mayor of Tuskegee. He broke away from the National Conference of Mayors 40 years ago and started the black man. So the black mayors meet. But the black mayors wasn't really getting nowhere because why? All our cities are broke. But boy, when they connected with Africa. And they remember what I told you a while ago that the Belgian, the Dutch, the Portuguese, the British, and any rest of them that want to get involved. They all suck African titties. Right. And boy, they mad when we ready to knock them off that titty. And boy, I'm gonna tell you, we were, me and another brother like Taiwan was videoing the conference. Somebody, they stole my computer. Tried to steal my hard drive. They do not want us to connect with Africa, brothers and sisters. But the sisters and brothers in Africa want to connect with us so bad. They understand now. They need us. Right. And if this connection is made, slavery is over on both sides. Because early in my lecture, I talked about how they've been enslaved like we've been enslaved. 
And they should be more embarrassed than us because if you was a Zulu, you could stay a Zulu. If you was a Muslim, you could stay a Muslim. When they were in Africa, under what went on with them, they wouldn't, they, they tongue wouldn't cut out if they was caught reading a the book. They wouldn't burn their stake if they was caught praying to their God. They wasn't damaged like us. They stayed whole. That's why when they come over, they whole. We're damaged. We're dysfunctional because any people went through what we went through would be dysfunctional. But the good news is here. We can fix it now. But it's going to take Africa. Because Africa is the richest continent in the world. And they don't need no bailout. They just need a couple good Negroes. Yeah, there you go. That's in this room. And if we go over there, we won't be Negroes no more. We gonna be mean. Cause when I was at that national conference, so a sister came up there from Nigeria. Billionaire. Right behind her brother spoke. Billionaire. It's money in Africa. Mm -hmm. Brother told Tony Malik Lu Shabazz in South Africa a couple months ago, brother, we would give you a diamond mine. Right. They give diamond mines away like our, yes, like our grandmamas used to give us a little plot of land to grow tomatoes on. Dr. Collins say Africa so fertile if you spit, all the shoot at the ground. That's right. It's time, brothers and sisters, for us to stop the slavery. We don't have a slave master no more. The slave master is the block in our mind. Our people are ready to receive us. So you leave here today and make sure every nephew, every niece, every child at Parkland, is it Parkland? Yes, sir. Have a passport right when they're born. Yes, sir. And whatever you do, you start talking to your preachers about taking trips to Africa. Stop wasting this money on this foolishness. Start bringing your schools to like we used to do. We send our kids to Ghana and they send their kids here. That's right. So we won't be such distant cousins. So we understand there's not really that much difference in us. Because if we do this, we're not a poor people. We have resources that we can put together and run this diamond mine with these brothers. Head up. Because don't nobody buy diamonds like us. Believe me. <laughs> All we gotta do is get a diamond to the right people, which is us. And we can't be talking about our athletes and just, do you ever go sit with them? Let me tell you something about athletes, because my brother was a pro football player. Boy, I'll never forget him. When he come out of that shower, he put on his clothes, and he coming out of that tunnel, and he coming up there, boy, you have crackers lined up for two miles. Hey, Junior, how are you, Junior? We well, never saw these crackers when we was eating oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> when we were trying to figure out how to kill roaches without rain. <laughs> boy, you see so many crackers lined up with gold suitcases, you swear you was born in a white family. Ain't no brothers out there. See, we talk, but we don't go out to that camp. See, these, these, these niggas are not here from you. Every time Dallas Man play a game, they come out of there in them same fans car. Boy, you ought to block them cars off. Ho, oh, man, we got to talk. But don't you dare stop them. That's right. If you ain't got nothing serious to talk about. That's right. Why are you going to stop them and waste this time? Get a business plan together that'll work. Right, that's right. Say, look, I went to Ghana, bro. And in Ghana, they got all the gold. I don't know if you know that. Mm, but here go a block of it. And they want you to get five of your, you know, air. I mean, you know how they run together in them strip tees and throw that money in there and make that's it rain? Right. Right. They'll run together to Ghana if you work on them right. That's right. But you got to have some of substance. That's right. You can't compete with these Jews playing, man. These Jews teach their kids at 12 years old how to handle uh, 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 Michael Jordan. Our kids sitting there trying to buy some Jordan tennis shoes. Yeah. They trying to design a new Jordan tennis shoe for your kid to buy. They had our mind. Buying a damn $232 tennis shoe and we can't afford shoe strings in the last six pair of shoes that we wore out. It's just common sense to get out of slavery. I really want to thank you for your time. And thank you.